Welcome traders to another Tick Mill weekly market outlook for a week commencing the 24th of April with me Patrick Munnerly. Starting in the US, we are moving into the Fed quiet period ahead of the uh, May May 3rd meeting. Uh, don't So there won't be any Fed speakers this week, uh, a relief to some. And I guess the calming of bank stresses and the combination of reasonable activity numbers, but persistently high core inflation, has allowed the Fed to stick with the message that another 25 basis point interest rate hike is the most likely outcome for that May 3rd meeting. And it's unlikely that this week's data will do little to change that pricing. Uh, first quarter GDP is the highlight of the data, data releases. Um, look for a Slightly sub-consensus 1.5% annualized growth rate. Consumer spending will be strong given the blowout retail sales report for January, which was boosted by unseasonably warm weather after a cold and wintry December. However, weaker net trade and inventory performance will go some way to offsetting that story. Uh, also be closely watching the Fed's favored measure of inflation, the core Personal consumer expenditure deflator it is expected to rise to 0.3% month over month and 4.5% year over year, which won't dissuade the Fed from hiking rates. We'll also see a fair amount of housing data and consumer confidence numbers, but these are likely to remain subdued. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index has, uh, has traded down just shy of our 100 target area, consolidating after a move back up from that 100 level to test resistance into the 102, 10190. So a couple of areas of interest. Either we get a close back through 101.95, and if we do, then I want to be looking to engage on the long side, looking for an equality objective up to 102.80s. Alternative scenario is we get a close back through 101.30s. If we do, I want to engage on the short side, targeting a move down to our 100 level. Moving to the Eurozone, and in terms of the data slate, uh, Monday we get German EFO business climate. Uh, last time out, 93.3, looking for a 97.3 uh, improvement print there. We also get EFO expectations. Uh, last time out, it was 91.2, looking for a 96.2 print there. And then the current assessment, uh, 95.4 last time out, looking for a much improved 98.4 uh, for that release. Then on uh, Wednesday, our German consumer confidence, last time negative 29.5. Looking for a small improvement there, negative 29. Let's get France consumer confidence uh, index. Looking for an 80.5 there versus the 81 last, last time out. Then we get the harmonized Eurozone uh, confidence print on Thursday, 99.3 last time out. Looking for a 100 print this time. And then heading into Friday, we get uh, Eurozone GDP, uh, first quarter, first look. Uh, uh, flatline last time, looking for a m modest improvement there to 0.3%. Uh, and that rounds out the data for the Eurozone uh, in the week ahead. So from a technical perspective, a couple of areas of interest. Any close now back through the 110 handle I want to engage on the long side, looking for a test of our target zone, 111.12 versus our swing low here at the 107.13s. Alternative scenarios, we take out the ascending trend line support, and as long as we hold this 10990 area, that gives us a downside equality objective at 10820s. The gain from there, once we're watching for bullish reversal patterns to re engage on the long side, same upside objective at that 11120s. Moving to the UK, in terms of the data slate for the week ahead, um, right move house price index on. Monday, uh, last time out there, percentage year over year, 24.2. And we get a UK CBI business op uh, optimism report on Tuesday, looking uh, last time negative five, looking for some improvement there. I uh, risk at CBI trends, uh, last time negative 20, so looking for again, uh, more improvement there. And then heading into Wednesday, uh, CBI retail sales, Last time, one, just flatlining, really. So looking for, again, a modest improvement there in terms of retail sales in the UK. And heading into Friday, uh, business Lloyd's Business Barometer. Uh, that's last time out, printed a 32 handle. And then we'll also get UK nationwide house price index. Uh, last time, year-over-year percentage, negative 3.1. So again, 
markets will be looking for any signs of optimism in the UK housing sector. From a technical perspective, sterling dollar consolidating through the past week in line with uh, with other pairs here. Let's just uh, see what we've got in terms of the swing structure here. So whilst we hold resistance at the 124.70s, then the quality objects are down to 122.80s. From there, watch for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side, looking for a move to our next target zone, which is 126.50s in a test of that weekly descending trend channel resistance. Alternative scenario is we don't get the deeper pullback to test the equality objective, and we get a close back through uh, 124.70s, 124.80s, and again, want to engage on the long side, same upside objective uh, for now. So moving to Japan, in terms of the data slate, uh, pretty quiet really next week. The main event is going to be the BOJ policy meeting on Friday uh, with, with the BOJ outlook reports as well, all uh, set for release on Friday. And it is Governor uh, Ueda's first first meeting as governor of the Bank of Japan. Markets aren't expecting at this stage any significant uh, moves to be made at this meeting. It would appear that it's going to be a more gradual process in terms of the yield curve control strategy and starting to walk that back. So from a technical perspective, the dollar yen uh, tested into the target area, the interim target area of 134.74. So nice reaction now. So I'm looking for a move back into 134.60s, watch for bearish reversal patterns there. First test will be into the high volume area, 133.14s, and then down into this trend channel support, 132.30s. Moving down under to Australia, we have in terms of the data calendar on uh, Tuesday, it is a public holiday. Uh, Wednesday, we get consumer price index looking for uh, two points, uh, two there, quarter over quarter, seven point one percent year over year for those consumer prices. We get the RBA trimmed mean CPI as well, looking for one point nine percent and seven point two percent on an annualized basis there, uh, with the inflation still running just a little bit hotter than obviously the RBA would like. Then heading into Thursday, we get export import price index, looking for a one point nine percent quarter over quarter, with the first quarter coming in at negative 0.9%. Then rounding out on Friday, we get private sector credit, month over month, year over year, looking for 0.7% uh, and a 5.8% print there uh, on the year over year data. And that rounds out the data down under in Australia. From a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar continues to trade in this corrective ascending trend channel. So what I'm looking for is any pullbacks into support at 6640s. Watch the bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. We've got an upside quality objective at 6814s. At this stage, it would take a close back through the pivot low here at 6619, suggested deeper move back down to test monthly, projected range support, and then the prior cycle lows at 6560s. And last but not least, let's get a weekend update for the risk barometer of note being Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Looks like we're seeing a five wave sequence to the downside here. So uh, 28,330 area, watch a bearish reversal patterns there for a fifth wave extension down into uh, this support zone at the 26,500. Now, from there, watch a bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a move up to test trend channel resistance back into the 29,416 level. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 24th of April. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.